magic number. Three. It is. It's the magic number. What does it all mean? Hello and welcome to Flintoff, Savage and the Ping Pong Guy. That's me, Matthew Side. This week we're going to talk about our blueprints for the future. Robbie's doing youth football. Fred's going to talk about cricket. I'm going to be talking about business. Also, we're going to be looking at bad sporting decisions. Remember, you can use the hashtag FredSavSide to suggest future topics you'd like to hear us talk about next week. But first topic, and this one's mine. Football, another weekend of disputed decisions. We've had the usual mix of penalties and handballs. In boxing, we had a controversial scorecard in Las Vegas, a difference of opinion in Manchester where Huey Fury lost his title fight to Joe Parker on points. This time, two judges scored at 118-110. The other judge, uh, the other judge saw the fight... George? Was it, how many judges were there? <laughs> saw it as a 114-114 draw. So the question we're asking, what's the worst decisions you've ever seen made in sport? And what do you think are the hardest decisions to get right? Oh, I think... um, Do you look back at some of your TV clips and look at the (laughs) clothes and think that was a bad decision? Very bad decision. That was a bad decision. Uh, (laughs) Clothes, bad decisions. I'm Obviously, I'm going to relate this to the football the Maradona handball for yep. England fans. I think it was all clear. And you could see Peter Shilton's reaction at the time. Yeah. Did, no. did, do, you, do you remember watching that live? I was at home, yeah. I was at you home. remember it? Yeah, what, what, yeah. 1986. When, it, when you say it's a bad decision... I, but, you could see. He could you see? I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you could see just the way he... he so basically, it wasn't it, obvious in it, real time, though, was it? I thought it was. Uh-huh. You could see Peter Shilton... You know, he wasn't the biggest Peter Shilton, great goalkeeper, but he had his hands in the air. But Maradona got above him... With his head, with Maradona could leap high, but you could see the way his arm was. It was it had to be handball, and the the player's reaction. So the Maradona one was obviously um, um, a very poor decision for England fans. But going back to the Frank Lampard goal, yeah, um, in that game against I don't, I don't know Germany. That. So Germany, it was I think it was two one at the time. Um, England were trailing, um, and then Frank Lampard hit a shot, hit the crossbar, was literally Fred. Two foot over the line, it bounced down and bounced back out, and it wasn't given. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, the technology's um, video goal line technology has been brought well, in. And I think that is the best decision people have made. It's clear now and obvious because that obviously the World Cup, you can go back to the World Cup yeah, 66. Was that ball over the line in video technology? Now you'd know, we, we still don't know if it was given, it was a goal, obviously, but. You still can't tell. So I think the goal line technology has been absolutely great. The one... But do you need the technology? Do you know if there's a problem? Why, why do they not just stand someone next to the post looking you at the line? You still can't tell. You think, well, if I'm stood there, you look if, I, if, I, if I'm a spare official, because yeah. they've got a lot of officials now, haven't they? Yeah. And they think, you know what, Frank Lampard's might have gone over. This is where football's thick. Why don't they, th- <laughs> why don't they think, you know what, why don't we just stand someone next <laughs> because, to that line? You we'll put someone in, bit, all right, right, think about it, Freddie. Someone in goal. Freddie, think about it. Tennis. You got line judges on every single line, wrong. but they still make mistakes. Whereas well, you get all kinds of Do you know why? I, I know why. I watch tennis <laughs> if I have to. If there's nothing else on telly, you know, if all of the other channels on the telly have gone fuzzy and there's tennis on, I might watch it. And you stood there and you see these line judges, and they, they have that crouch. They're all about eighty. That's why they can get some young blood in. They, they stand there. Well, I mean, now they've got Cyclops, yeah. or whatever it's called, for lines, All which time. is about right. But they're old people, aren't they? Their eyes have gone. So the hardest decision I think you can you, is now is going to be diving. That's yeah. going to be hard yeah. because it's subject. The subjective ones, you know, where people are going to be judging on them is so difficult because a dive, unless if you're not touched, you know, but then a dive, you could say, is he hurling to get out of the way of a challenge which could avert him? So this, how are you going to say... He dived. It's easy. He's dived. But <laughs> it's not, though. Th- th- this is so many things that come into the equation. Yeah. This is where I don't, I don't like sports, which are subjective. You're talking about diving. Diving. You know, someone might see it differently. Torval and Dean, when the 80s, were robbed at the Olympics. Robbed. Uh-huh. Should have won a gold on the comeback trail, shouldn't they? <laughs> and then purple outfits. What were they going... Did- do, 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 oh, Bolero. Was, yeah, Bolero. Bolero. Yeah, was that that might have been when they won I think it was actually. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but the subject surely in this day and age, no sport should be subjective. But it, even in cricket, there's gonna be some subjectivity, isn't there? Well they're trying to get it out, aren't they, by oh. these referrals and things. Uh-huh. But there should nothing should be subjective. Even boxing. 
We saw Huey Fury. We didn't watch it. Me and Rob were travelling home from Scotland and it's on the radio. And everyone's saying that Huey Fury's beaten Scott Parker. Yeah. Is it Scott Parker? Um, He's the footballer, isn't he? No, the, Joe, the ginger. Joe. He's the ginger Joe, one down south. We had Mike Costello and Steve Bunce on. Yeah, Steve brilliant, Bunce, it? great, yeah. And it was, it was great radio. And it's, we but, listened, but this yeah. is subject... Because one, one judge had it as a draw. Yeah. And then all the pundits were saying it's a masterclass from Huey Fury, 23, to do this defensive masterclass. Could have let a few more go, but he's been brilliant. And then two judges, 110, 118 yeah. against him. Yeah. And surely there is somewhere now where it's on, it's on telly. They've got cameras. Surely... But the funny thing about boxing is you sometimes... You can see a you, punch land. But the, you, you know your history of boxing. Sugar Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler, huge mm. bout, middleweight unification. Actually, I think it was for one of the belts that Hagler held at the time. And even experts would look at that fight. Leonard was more defensive. Hagler was more aggressive. Some people scored for Leonard. They're impressed with his ring generalmanship. Um, others scored for Hagler. I think you do have subjectivity in boxing, even if you watch it on TV, even if you have computers, there's going to be an element of stuff. But the thing about boxing, Pernell Whitaker against Julio Cesar Chavez, another big bout. I was really into boxing at the time. Whitaker was fantastic. He completely dominated Chavez. It was scored a majority draw. I lost my interest in boxing at that point because I thought it was corrupt. Whereas in football, I think that some of the bad decisions, some of the controversy is part of what makes it so much fun. 606, a lot of the calls are about refereeing decisions, about offsides, about diving. That sort of soap operatic controversy is part of what makes football fun. What about cricket? What, what, what are the worst things you've seen in cricket? Well, one of the decisions was made by a player in Australia. They need they're playing a game and the fellow bowled an underarm, so they couldn't win. And then they changed well, the rules. But that was like What was it, that? In the eighties. Yeah, I see your phone, you're all right. It's not my phone, it's yours. Oh is it? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> what do you think the toughest decision is in, in cricket for an umpire? What he's gonna have for his lunch. <laughs> Hang on. I, 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 do they have to make a decision now, an umpire yeah, in cricket? Because you, what, you get, where, you get where? With, LB's, you still got to make a decision. It right, can yeah, be referred, yeah. but only in test cricket or televised games. But I, I've been out given out to some terrible decisions in the past. The and, worst? Oh, the worst was in New Zealand. I missed it by about a foot. Mm -hmm. But I thought I'd hit it because I hit the ground at the same time. <laughs> um, so I trudged off. But yeah, cricket's a tough one. And I'm going to go against what I just said a minute ago because I still feel the umpire is sacred. Whatever he says goes. And there is human error, but I think it adds to the respect to the game where you've not got a football scenario. Everyone charges around him, arguing with him. But we are getting to the point now where he's being challenged through referrals. Mm. And even them, I, I still don't understand the process because it's umpire's call, it might be hitting the wickets, but he's not out. Mm. Either go all the way to technology and get a definitive decision or stick to the umpire. I think that should be the case in all sports. Has there ever been a decision in cricket that was so bad, so woeful, that you've looked at it and said, you know what, something in me died there because I wanted the game to be won by the better team, the better player, and yet it hasn't been? Not really. The only decisions were when they started match-fixing and spot-betting. Right. You know, bowling no balls and yeah. all them type of things. Uh -huh. But, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, Rob. What, what, what are you going to do? You know, Go on. Do you know what referees... You talk about referees... There was a stat out not so long ago. Um, so a, ref, a Premier League referee has to make... Do you know this, Matthew? He makes around 245 decisions per game, three times more than an average player touches the ball over 90 minutes. That's one decision every 22 seconds, right? I suspect that's a flawed statistic, don't you think? No idea. Because they must be making it, much, many more decisions than that. Because 245, even... So listen, approximately 45 of these decisions are technical, whether goal kicks, corners or throw-ins, leaving around 200 decisions to judging physical contact and disciplinary actions. Of those 200, around 35 are visible decisions where an action is taken, fouls restarts, and 165 are non-visible where players are allowed to continue. In total, refs make around five errors per game, meaning that they are right 98% of the time. Yeah, that's interesting. 98% of the time? Yeah. Well, that's all right. 
Although, don't you think we often incredible fo- when you think about yeah, it? Yeah, ninety-eight that- percent of the time a referee's right on the football pitch. And I think they did a documentary somewhere where players were asked to go and try and be referees for a day, and some of those offsides are incredibly difficult to get right because you've got to be looking at two different places at the same time. You've got to be using your peripheral vision to tell whether or not a player is offside or not when the ball is played from a different part of the pitch. But I think in football. We often hammer a referee for taking a decision that turns out to be wrong. Game change, but big not. But we yeah. don't hammer a referee for failing to take a decision that they might have taken on a foul yeah. that they didn't actually that, make. That, that ninety-eight percent, the two percent, will be the big massive decision that everybody right. talks about. Mm. Exactly. Do so you have sympathy with referees? No, not at all. Even though you know that it's difficult and they get ninety-eight percent of the decisions right. Um, I'll take that back. Do I have sympathy, with referees? I'll take it back, Rob. See um, you through. <laughs> I do with the ones who, who. Do I have sympathy with referees? Do I have sympathy with referees? Um, the fact they get hammered, they're doing their best. They've not got a huge amount of technology to help them, and they get they, hammered every single week by they, the managers and the. They've got a choice. They've they got a it. choice. They choose to be referees. They choose to be referees, and in a, in a, in a, I believe it's a professional job now. It's a well-paid job. They get to see the world. You know, some of, <laughs> they do. They go, they no, do. No, just... They do. I mean, you're growing up, you're going to be yeah. a referee now. Being a referee yep. 40 years ago is yeah. different to being a referee now. It's they lucrative get, too. They get, they get lucrative, they get chauffeured to games. They're like stars. They've got, they got newspaper column and fans, so they should, yeah. because I want to hear that insight and I do oh. like it. But have I got sympathy with them? When they get the big decisions wrong, no. No, because do, you can see it, but they can't come out and speak after games, which drives me mad. Do, do you Andrew, think, yeah. do you think psychologically something happens to to referee? You know, like if you have somebody working on the door at a nightclub, they've got that power. They can say, "No, your jeans aren't skinny enough. You're not coming in," and suddenly they start to become almost inflamed by the power. They become megalomaniacs. I think that the really good referees and umpires, they've got the power but they don't abuse it. But I think there are some who get that power and they start lauding it over the place. It's players. like they've had a good game if you don't notice them. Exactly. But, but some, some want to be noticed. Yeah. What's the worst, to, find, to find, finish this off then, what's the worst decision you've ever seen in sport? Me? Both of you. Um, worst what, one that I was involved in, Ashes, 2002, I think, in Australia. Nasser Hussein, captain, won the toss at Brisbane. <laughs> it's bat. You've got a bat. There's no two ways about it. You're at <laughs> Brisbane, bat. <laughs> bat. Just say, yes, we'll have a bat. Get your pads on, Michael Atherton. We'll have a bowl. <laughs> we bowled because I. He, he comes up as a tinge of green on it. Nonsense. <laughs> he didn't have the confidence in himself or his team to put runs on the board. Terrible decision. What happened? How many did you make oh, now? Did you remember? Yes, we fielded for about three days. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Matthew Hayden get loads of runs. <laughs> was it a draw or a loss? Oh, we got hammered. We got hammered. I wasn't, nec- I wasn't playing. I was injured. I had come back from injury and I got brought on as 12th man. Did you? I couldn't run, but I got put in at slip and then I got put at deep back with square leg and got sent off by NASA. Really? The 12th man got sent off. That was a bad decision as well, Nash. But batting. <laughs> got a bat at Brisbane. That's it's interesting, it. isn't it? The worst decision you've ever seen. It wasn't an umpire. It wasn't it was a, a referee. It was a captain of the England what was team. Yours? Mine, OK, from table tennis, there was an Olympic final in doubles. And there's a rule in table tennis that when you serve, you have to throw the ball yeah. straight up. Do you, know, do you know that annoys me? Do you know when you play people? Yeah. And they're not like... All fair with that rule, and they think they've got a brilliant serve. They yeah. do it straight out of their hand. So that you get this. me. The reason it's not allowed is if you do it straight out of the hand, you can get about ten times as much spin because you're getting a faster accelerating ball. So it's it's illegal to do it. But the thing is, you can throw this ball straight up, and it's absolutely vertical, or it could be one degree off vertical. Every single umpire in the history of the world has said, you know, so long as it looks vertical, mm. you're okay. Olympic final doubles. People have worked for four years to get there. This umpire started calling somebody for not throwing the ball straight up. Yeah. They were throw. I mean, I got the. I was commentating on this for the B, but the Olympics, and they were doing these slow motion. I've got to tell you, it was vertical. Every single person in the world who had any understanding of table tennis would have said that was a legal service. It ruined the match. 
destroyed their chances of winning the gold medal. I've never been so frustrated in my life. And it was somebody who wanted to get... You've had a good life, then. Somebody wanted to get... <laughs> you've had a good <laughs> life. If that's the most frustrated <laughs> you've been. But you know what it was? It was somebody who wanted to get on the telly. Yeah. Somebody who could say, yeah, that was me. I was the, the really significant person in that doubles match. You've done it the right since. You've done well since. <laughs> I see. J- just quickly on table tennis, yeah. slightly off piste. Mm-hmm. Jamie Redknapp's desperate to play you. He oh, texted yeah. me the other day, desperate Dan to play. I'll take you on Instagram, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's a lot of good uh, footballers at table tennis. Van Persie, He's not fantastic. one of them. Jamie's not one of them. Is he not? Is Go he on, Rob. Not? Worst decision. Um, worst decision I've ever seen was um, the Lampard one. The Lampard. It was, it was, as you said, anybody could see that. It was two, three foot over the line. But what when, about when you were a player? So you're on the me, pitch. Uh, Chris you, Foy. Go on. Uh, Cyclist. No. <laughs> Yeah. Chris Foy set me off. Only red card in only only my red only red card in domestic football. I got sent off once for Wales. That was a shocking. In fact, the two red cards I've received in my career were absolutely scandalous. And uh-huh. if they were reviewed now, they would be um, taken back. What happened with Foy? Foy. So I'd been booked, uh-huh. and then I was in the, on the halfway line playing Middlesbrough for Blackburn. Two one down. George Boltang is literally. A yard away from me, he smashes the ball. He's trying to spread out wide. I've got my arms by my side. Yeah, so I was making myself like I was crouched down a little bit, just jockeying. Yep. He smashed the ball from my head away, hit me on the arm. My arm flung back around my head. <laughs> Easy that hard. Second yellow card for that ball in the middle of the pack. It was a most nonsense decision. So Chris Foy, never forgive him. Only red card in my domestic career. And then the referee, Northern Ireland Wales, Michael Hughes. Smash me! People can look at this on YouTube. You you haven't seen it. I've got nailed. I'm running away from him, which is quite hard to believe in the first place. <laughs> He's come from behind, chopped me down. Uh-huh. I've gone flying. I've I've got up. My shorts are like <laughs> down a little bit. Yeah. I've gone. I've just stood up. So I've got nailed. I've stood up. He's pushed me. I've gone backwards. Remember, like Paul Alcott, the yeah, 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 yeah. I've got that. I've <laughs> fell over and I've got set off. What? Honestly, you got to look at I've YouTube. Got, I tell you what, if that is an accurate description of what actually happened, I'll that show, sounds I'll, like the biggest travesty I'll show you ever. In, I'll show you in the week. It's unbelievable. So those two referees, shocking. Well, another terrible decision. Terrible I hope this decision. Is NASA. Terrible decision. Again. It's a cricket one. It's about me. Terrible decision. We go at Bangladesh on a tour. All right. I, I'm injured. I can't bowl, mm-hmm. but I'm av- averaging fifty or sixty with the bat. So it's the morning we're leaving to go to Bangladesh. I don't know if I'm going. Right? Did not make the decision. I'm in bed with a missus. I booked a taxi to take me to Manchester Airport. It's coming in half an hour. Uh-huh. I've had my blazer pressed. It's in the cupboard. <laughs> All my kit's ready. I packed my bag. So then I think Rachel's saying, are you going to Bangladesh? I said, I- I'm not sure, to be honest. I-, I don't know what's happening, but taxi's coming in half an hour. So I phoned up the selector, David Graven. I said, Grav, just a quick one. <laughs> Am I um, am I going to Bangladesh or what? Because I don't know if it's to get up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so he, he, he started, oh, 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 well, well, um, um, we, we, we've, and I love Grav, I get on real well with Grav, so he's also, he said, well, we, we've, we've decided um, we, we're not going to take you, we're going to take Paul Collingwood. I said, oh. are you sure about this? <laughs> are you sure? I, I read out how my season had gone and his season. He says, yeah, we've decided not to take you. Um Worst decision ever. How can you not take us? What was the what was the reasoning behind it? Well they love Collie, don't they? Uh huh. Yeah. Um so they took him, so I turned over and went back to bed. Terrible decision. Tell you. I'm sure I'm gonna show you the red card, right? So I'm just showing now as we speak. Matthew and um Freddie. Who's the ref? Who's the ref? Has he got a syrup on? What what's this? What's this, right? You need to get on the mic, Matthew, because it's not so I'm watching, we're watching it now. Let's speed it on here. Right, what's this? Here we go. Here we go. Robbie Savage find out. Oh! What's, 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 what's? What? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm going, to just, I'm going to try and describe what? this. Robbie Savage is at full pace down the wing. His ponytail is bouncing behind him. <laughs> the fella that. comes in, chops him down. Robbie, in his anger, anger gets up and tries to pull his shorts down. Why would you <laughs> grabbing his pants? <laughs> <laughs> the hard man of football grabbing shorts, and then the other okay. fella takes a swing at him. Robbie Savage backpedalling, not on the front foot. 
Hands on his head, get sent off. Okay, I think Robbie. you got sent off there for being a bit of a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> How was that sent off? That, okay, that is a terrible decision. But didn't you grabbed him? Didn't you grabbed his shorts? He sort of the pulled shorts his shorts to get up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> How am I sent off yeah. for that? Oh, terrible, it's terrible. There you go. So what did what did the uh, coach and the other players say after? No, they, They're on your why side. Why did you grab his shorts? But the other thing was on the pitch. The way I was crying my eyes out. Oh, that was. Really? Do you know why? Because I knew. I'd miss the game against England or Old Trafford. I was suspended for the next game. And it's the first thing I thought, yeah. we're going to miss England, Old Trafford for Wales. Yeah. Never played against England. Gutted. So we, we see bad decisions in football, bad decisions in cricket. Any decisions outside sport that has affected you? Something that somebody said or done, and it wasn't fair, it wasn't just, and it's totally frustrated you. Because bad decisions aren't just about sport, they're about life. Oof, that is a great question. What? Bad decisions decision. outside of sport. That is a good question. You must make them every day, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> what about in telly? Anyone ever asked you to say just, something, uh, to deliver a line, do, and you thought, hang do, on, do that, know, that isn't right, and you've gone along with it, and then I made it totally... Do, do you know up. my biggest... What are the, the decisions I made when... And... You know, you, you play cricket, and then you, you start earning a few quid, and then the vultures start circling... Yeah. Oh, we'll get into this. Investments, let's invest in this, invest in that. Come on, this is what it's going to do. My worst decision was taking on a financial advisor. Yes. A few years ago. And I, I don't think I can mention his name, but um, yeah, put you into this, became a. We mentioned it on a previous one. Comes in, he's a mate, he's at your christenings, he's yeah. at your wedding, he's at everything. Yep. Yep. And he invests in all these things. And the only gain was for him. And then years later, you find out that none of it's worth an absolute penny. It's worth absolutely nothing. You've been ripped off. You've had your pants down. He's had a good day out of it. And then people, for me, need to be named, shamed, and I've got brought. To tell you, him. Funny, I had lunch with my parents yesterday in Reading, and we just suddenly got onto this conversation about independent financial advisors. And I had one who advised me. I was putting more money into my pet. I was putting ridiculous amounts of money into the pet. I couldn't understand why I'd done it, but I was impressionable. I was about 17, just started earning money. He was getting a commission on the amount, I think, that I put in. And it was a stupid decision to make. And it is very easy to get led down the wrong way when you're young and you're earning money. And you I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying there aren't good ones out there. Oh, no, there are, yeah, yeah. My, my best mate, Paddy, he's, he's one. He's brilliant. Yep. And he takes it as if it's his money, but there's so many sharks. Yep. And they find you, don't they, Rob? Yeah, they do. I've just made a bad decision, according to my wife. I've just, I've just bought a car. Another one? A Mini Cooper. A Mini Cooper. How many cars have you got? No, no just Mini Cooper. Okay. Mini Cooper. Um, um, uh, I lease one. Well, you can't drive the Ferrari every day, can you? <laughs> yeah. What about you the Bentley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are a bit idiot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's an idiot. He's a clown. What are we doing? No, I haven't got a Ferrari at all. You got a Bentley? No, no. I saw a photo in a magazine. Have Gone. You sold it. Okay. Sold it. Um, I'm cutting back, Matthew. I'm cutting back. What? Um, Save money for the electricity on back, the lights. Cutting back. I've so I've bought a Mini Cooper, uh -huh. a Mini Cooper S, um, 2007. It comes this week. Um, cream, black stripes down the middle. It's got a John Works kit on it. Um, <laughs> and my wife's saying, "Why didn't you buy a black one?" And she's giving me grief. Uh huh. So. I've gone for the cream one. Um, 50,000 miles. Cream or green? Cream. Cream. Oh. Cream. That's my accent. Cream. <laughs> cream. Cream. Um, how, how long do you think you'll have it? Um, I'm going to keep it because the winter's coming. I thought, what? what? Winter's coming? Where's the Game of Thrones? <laughs> winter's coming. Jon Snow's gone to buy a mini John Cooper S. Winter's coming. Fucking <laughs> hell, winter's coming. It's not winter. I'll tell you what, I'll take, I'll take this dragon on in my mini. <laughs> <laughs> the White Walkers, I'll run them over. So I've got a mini for the winter. It was a bad decision, I think. But listen, we'll find out, Matthew, if I miss a few of these podcasts, I can't get in. <laughs> so yeah, I bought a it's mini. It's a lovely car. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. There we go. Not as nice as the Ferrari. Who's <laughs> <laughs> got a Ferrari? <laughs> Thank you for listening. You can download the podcast for extended versions of all the topics we covered on this week's show at the Five Live website and all the usual podcast places. The whole of the first series is also available to download. Please use the hashtag FredSavSide to get in touch through the week. Be great if you could leave a review on iTunes and give us a rating. We'll be back at the same time next week. But from now, for all of us, goodbye. Thanks, Matthew, and congratulations on your awards nominations too. Before 11 o'clock tonight, three days after it was refused a licence to operate in London, the boss of Uber finally puts his hand up and says the company's made mistakes. So what next? <laughs>